Hey guys, so you want to put down some baseboard and shoe molding, but you're just having all kind of problems. Your corners aren't square, the walls aren't straight, the joints aren't lining up, you have gaps in the seams, and you just don't know what to do and you're all stressed out over it. Well, you don't need to call a psychiatrist for a counseling session because I'm going to show you some coping skills. Stick around. Okay, say you're, you're putting down baseboard like this, colonial baseboard, and you get to this corner, and you gotta go around the corner. There's one of two ways to do it. You can cut each board at a 45, and just put them together like that. And yeah, that would work. But if you were using wood, instead of PVC, in time, that joint would come open. The great thing about PVC is it's not gonna shrink, so you could just do that, put some caulk in there, and you're done. I'm gonna show you a better way. You have your inside corner. That's gonna be great for the time being. However, there's two problems with that. One, if your room's not a perfect 90 degree square in your corner, you're gonna to have to try to figure out the angle so you can split that and get this corner. Secondly, like I said, if you're using a wood product instead of PVC like this, it's going to, in time, that joint's going to open up and you're going to see that. So to make a cope joint, you leave one end square, you, you make the same cut, the same 45 cut here, but what you're going to do is remove this, this back part of this. So if you want, you can take a pencil and just highlight that cut, that line right there, and then take a coping saw and follow that line and cut this all out. So then, when you put that in the corner, you get a nice tight fit. And especially on a painted corner, I would run a little caulk back there and that fits together you're going to have a nice tight joint. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I have my two pieces cut. This is my corner. I, I've actually just mocked up a little corner because I'm not actually using these. So you, you would take your one with the straight cut and you put it in the corner all the way to the corner. You take your one with your coat cut like I showed you and you push it up in there. Okay, right now yeah, you still might see a little bit of a gap in there, but with the way that cope joint is, that's very easy to fix. So what I do, and this is only gonna work on a, on a joint that you're painting. I just take a little bit of painter's caulk and I put it along that cope joint. And what you wanna do is get it like along the front there. Then I slide it back in. I clean up my joint. So once that's painted, you'll never see that joint. That's a completely hidden joint. That's how you make a coat joint, but I'm actually not putting up baseboard. I'm just putting up shoe molding to cover the gap in my laminate floor. So the same rules apply. Take my first piece and I put it up into the corner and then I just nail it in place. And then I gotta go coat my second piece. So, the first thing I need to do, I got a 45 degree miter along the face of that joint. And then just like with the other one, I'm gonna back cut that piece. Paper, and there's your nice cope joint. Let's go see if it fits. So I just put my board down, slide it up, and that's a nice tight joint. So all I have to do is nail it off. Okay, 
So I'm working my way down this wall and my piece of molding isn't long enough. So I need to connect to continue down. And I'm going to use what's called a scarf joint. I've cut this piece of molding at a 22 and a half degree angle back. I'm going to take my next piece, figure out the measurement I need, cut it at a 22 and a half degree angle the other way, and put it right in there with a little bit of glue. Let me show you how to do it. This is an easier method to me than measuring. I coat this corner just like before. I lay the piece of molding down and then I just eyeball the back of that cut there. So I mark it actually a little longer than I think it might be because I'd rather cut it too long and have to recut it than have it be too short. You can always cut wood off, you can't put it back on. So let me go cut that and fit it in place. So I have my saw set to 22 and a half degrees. And like I said, I'm gonna cut that a little long. So I went back and forth to the saw three or four times, fitting and, measure and recutting this. I have a nice tight fit. So I'm just gonna put a little glue in that butt joint there and nail it in place. So now that I have that glued and nailed, it's, you can see it's almost an invisible joint. And that's all there is to coping joints and making scarf joints. So I'm just going to finish up this room. So using a cope joint is a great way to do inside corners for all kind of molding, be it baseboard, shoe molding, or even crown molding. Although crown molding, there's a little more involved, but that's a topic for a whole nother day. So I hope you got something out of this project. If this is your first time here to the Homecraft Chronicles, I'd ask you to subscribe to that way you won't miss out on any of the great projects I have in store. So have you installed molding around your house? Do you use cope joints? Let me know about it. I'd be curious to hear how you made out. So if you use cope joints in your miters, that's just another way that you can get that professional touch that'll make your house look great. So until I see you next time, my name is Tom. Remember, take care of yourself and your home. I'll see you soon.